Welcome to today's episode of Life in HD, where we invite special guests to come in and chat with us about human design in real life. And if you're new to this channel, I'm your host, Crystal Alferrero. I'm a human design guide and founder of the Human Design Academy. And today I'm really excited because we're being joined by the incredible Amber Chastain. She's a 5-1 emotional projector. She's a coach, energy worker, and mom. And yeah, I'm excited to have you here. Welcome, Amber. How are you? Thank you. I am good. I'm excited. Yay, me too. All right. So basically... I wanted to just kick off and have our audience get familiar with who you are, you know, what you do, and how do you integrate human design into the work that you do? Yeah, so that is a fun question. Um, Like everything else that I've done in life, everything just builds. So I, my line one, right, I find something and I want to know all about it and I learn all about it and then it's just profound and life changing and I want to share it with the world and then I move on to the next thing but I keep all of those things as a bag of tricks so you know my my certifications are a long list but basically energy work law of attraction. Um, thriving relationships hypnosis quantum healing hypnosis technique. Uh, Reiki, those are all services that I utilize with my clients um, to help them get in alignment with themselves. So meeting the client where they are and being able to utilize any of those that would best suit them. Um, Human design for me was the piece that really um, allowed me to do that in a completely different way. You know, whenever you're meeting with someone, if they're exactly like you or have the same makeup as you, your way works perfectly, right? A lot of the time. But if they're not exactly made like you, there are so many nuances and different things that can add more resistance than be helpful. So knowing my clients human design, whether they want to know it or not, helps me to coach them in the best manner for them. So I just love human design in that aspect for the business. Oh yeah. It's like a coach's cheat sheet, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Almost like, and, you know, oh no, go ahead. Yeah. And it's not like they need to fit in that box, but if there is something that you're questioning or something that's not working quite right, I can look at their design and be like, oh, okay. So this might be the issue that we're having with it. You're not doing anything wrong. I'm not telling you anything wrong. This just isn't going to work for you because X, Y, Z, you know? So it's Mm -hmm. really, it's just this thing to lean on to set people up for success. So, oh yeah. yeah. I've loved integrating that into my practice. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're kind of like a jack of all trades. You have so many different tools under your belt, like a true projector mastering Mm -hmm. all the systems to help your clients kind of find their success, find their authentic path as well. Um, I feel like it's just, it's exactly what a projector is here to do and you're just Mm -hmm. kind of living it, right? So what I wanna know is your personal journey with human design and what brought you to human design? How has it changed your life? Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day because all these other things, I can remember the, the specific things that brought me there, right? Like the initial spark with human design. I can't, I know that it came across my life and I started digging in and I eventually found your YouTube page. And I was like, I like her (laughs) and I learn well from her and I binged your videos and then enrolled in the class and all of those things. But I don't remember the spark. I don't remember how it started, which is interesting for me. Um, but as far as the journey, it's just, it's been a lifelong search, um, that jack of all trades, you know, I've been that my whole life and I always felt flighty or felt like I couldn't, um, decide what I wanted to do, you know? So it was like, I did cosmetology in high school and then I started for nursing school and then I went to become a massage therapist and I finished that and then I got married and then I went back to school. And so it was like I was always in school or useless jobs, you know, like just the something buying my time. And I always felt like I didn't have my course of action. Um, And then whenever I did come into energy work, 
that fit. That felt perfect. It felt like this hole had been filled, essentially. And that's my cat. Um, <laughs> it felt like that hole had been fixed. And then it just continued to grow and expand. And all of those dead end jobs or mm -hmm. things that didn't work fit somehow. You know, my, my years in IT helped me build my website. Oh, wow. My years in um, customer service positions helped me to communicate with people. My years in the medical field helped me to bridge a gap between this esoteric spiritual woo-woo that people think we do and the medical world, the scientific world. So mm -hmm. all of those things, almost instantly when I found my peace, my life purpose, you know, that, and it was great. So finding human design, is just, it was that next step for me to make yeah. everything fit even better. I love it. And there is that like common thread between all the skills that you do. And it really sets the foundation for you as a coach in general, mm -hmm. right? It's not like you had to pick one of those modalities or like you had to pick just one of those things. You were able to really bring them all together to help other people through those specific transformations that they're trying to, you know, achieve for themselves as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and so knowing that human design is a self-discovery tool, self-awareness tool, um, and I know you've been on your inner journey for a very long time, like mm -hmm. even before finding human design, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so was there anything new that you learned about yourself through human design that maybe you didn't know before or that you were like maybe denying in yourself before? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um things that I always felt were right, but yet I would deny because it wasn't society standards, right? It was, um, I worked my life like a manifesting generator, you know, like I was making things happen. I was working 60 hours a week. I had two small kids. I had a husband that I was taking care of. I had the house to be spotless because I needed everything to be perfect all of the time because the slightest inconvenience would just debilitate me basically. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that as a projector. I ended up in adrenal failure. Mm -hmm. I ended up on like 16 pills a day and three hormone creams and just trying to function because I was so burnt out. So, you know, uh, there was a piece that allowed me to do it. Um, my husband passed away in 2014. And so I just kind of shut out the world entirely. And then as I built back, it was things that worked for me, but there was still this piece that I felt lazy. You know, I mm -hmm. felt like I had to have the motivation and um, all these things that made me, forced me to do things. And those didn't feel in alignment with me, but you know, I didn't want to be lazy. I didn't want to be the flaky one. I didn't want to be the societal piranha basically by yeah. not living up to everyone else's standards. So I had done a lot of shadow work and deconditioning prior to human design. So the majority of it fit me almost instantly. Yeah. And the things that didn't feel like they fit um, I came around to really quickly and was like, you know, that actually is perfect for me. I didn't like when I found out I was a projector, you know, um, initially it was no, that, that sounds like lazy. That sounds like, um, I'm not going to have energy to do anything. And I like to do things, you know, I don't. Mm -hmm. So, but learning to work with it and seeing, I really do actually do that and giving myself permission that if I want to spend the whole day watching TikToks laying in my bed, I'm going to do it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> because I've also started integrating, even since learning human design, how important it is to have your passive, your active and your neutral times, right? So projectors are the farthest thing from lazy has mm -hmm. what I've learned. You know, I am constantly taking in information. I am constantly examining my surroundings. I am constantly thinking and facilitating. I'm just doing it more in my mind yeah. than I am with my body. And then whenever it clicks in my mind, I'm ready to go. I've got the energy and we get it done in an hour versus the five days it would have taken me if I would have just started. So yeah. So it's, it's taught me that how I work with things is perfect. 
which exactly. that's my main point with learning human design for myself was I have permission to be this person that feels aligned to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. There's so much shame that projectors carry around, mm-hmm. you know, feeling out of place because we can't keep up at times with, you know, certain people around us, uh, especially those that worked in, you know, traditional, I guess, nine to five work environments where yeah. it's like, go, go, Not go me. tight deadlines. Um, and I feel like, yeah, I totally went through that projector rejection when I found out I was a projector. It was like denial, like, no, that's not me. Yeah. I, I'm oh, an MG. I, I would resonate with an MG, with MG yeah. energy. Um, but it just, it totally made sense because the times that I felt the most shitty about myself in the workplace was because I felt like there was something wrong with me for wanting to go home at, mm-hmm. at six o'clock and not stay later than that. Right. Right. Um, And that nine to five is such a, for me, so restrictive and inefficient. And, you know, for other people, it works great for a generator. Mm -hmm. It works great for a manifesting generator. I'm, you know, I'm full of manifesting generators in this house, right? So they're wanting to constantly do something and they're spending hours doing something that I look at and think you could do that in 15 minutes. I don't understand why we're doing it like this. So yeah, it's just that nine to five feels like such a waste of time to me. And even if I'm sitting on the couch watching a YouTube or listening to a podcast or something, that's not lazy time to me. That is efficient time to me because I'm absorbing, I'm learning, I'm preparing, you know, (laughs) like I'm you're nourishing yourself. (laughs) But if I had to sit in a cubicle for eight hours, I would lose my mind. I mean, I used to do that. There's no possible way for me to do that now. Not ever going to happen again. (laughs) So I'm with you and I'm I'm okay with that because I know that that's how I'm made. So exactly. Oh yeah. It just, it's so powerful. It's that big fat permission slip to Uh embrace it, embrace not being all go, go, go all the time, right. Learning how to work with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's really important for a lot of projectors who are just coming to human design to understand, like there is beauty in not having that consistent energy all the time. It's about being efficient and being smart with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, so another question I had for you, because you have a five, one profile, um, And I'm really, really curious because I have actually zero fifth line energy in my chart. And so I like the projection field intrigues me. It's very Mm -hmm. interesting to me. And I wanted to hear from you how you would describe what that fifth line projection field feels like for you. Like, are there any common projections or things that others have about you that's absolutely not true? Like, how would you kind of describe that? Yeah. And, you know, that's an interesting question because I have multiple projection fields in my chart, right? So I don't know what is really coming from which one um, or if they all just kind of mesh together and work the same. But a big misconception of me is that I'm intimidating, Mm -hmm. you know? My kids, my son will tell me that, you know, my kids have told me that my boyfriend has told me that. And I'm like, I'm the sweetest person in the (laughs) world. You know, like I can be awful. Right. I'm very blunt and determined and set in my ways on certain things. So there's a lot of things that, yes, I do just cut things off, but for the most part, I don't see myself as intimidating but people do see my energy as intimidating when they're not open to be a part of it. If Mm -hmm. that makes sense. It's almost like that projection feels like, no, you're not ready for this discussion. So just don't approach me sort of thing. And I don't know if that's the projection field because I'm not consciously doing it in any way. It's gotta be something with my energy Mm -hmm. and I'm not super warm and fuzzy. That's not me (laughs) as a person. But I am open, inclusive, and ready and willing to help whenever it lines up. But I don't need to just like overly pour over to somebody if they're not engaging me, right? If I don't have that acknowledgement, that recognition, and that invite, I don't need to be a part of it. So yeah, I don't know if that comes out as intimidating 
maybe. I mean, I feel like, and especially as women, right? Like any kind of strong personality traits have, mm -hmm. you know, can come across to some people as intimidating or, you know, there's yeah. that, I guess there's that not really misconception, but there's this, you know, ideal of a woman that's supposed to be, you know, bubbly and super like overly friendly. I don't know if that's a thing, but like, you know what I mean? Like there's a yeah. certain way that people expect us to be and to act. And if we don't feel fit into a certain mold, not to say that, you know, your kids and your, and your partner think that you need mm -hmm. to be like that, but um, yeah, like certain stronger characteristics. And if you're not like, you know, a kindergarten teacher, it can come off as intimidating to certain people that mm -hmm. might not be used to that. Right. right. Well, and then that are around me all the time, that's just when we're having discussions, you know, and it's not like they're afraid to approach. Me yeah, exactly. <laughs> my, my kids know that anything they need ever, they come to me, whether they think I'm approachable at the moment or not, you know, but my son, we've had those discussions and he's my old soul. He's about to be 14. He's, he's also the only other emotional um, mm -hmm. authority in the house. So we kind of connect on that a little bit, but I'm like, so why was that not received well? And, you know, we'll have these discussions like, mom, I mean, you are sometimes a little bit intimidating. And I'm like, well, what? <laughs> okay, but am I doing something that is making, he's like, no. He's like, I think that's just you. And I said, because I'm not trying to do that. Yeah, I know. But sometimes you can seem intimidating and maybe people don't receive that well or something like that, you know? I'm like, okay. <laughs> One of the things that I noticed in your chart is that you have like all of your channels are individual channels. Um, mm -hmm. You have a lot of that individual circuitry, the 6124, the 4323, the 3955 and the 3828. I feel like, you know, maybe the 3839 combination that can sometimes come off and give off that that energy of potentially being um, provocative in certain ways or mm -hmm. um, having tension at the not really tension, but you know what I mean? Just coming off as some kind of intimidating in, in, in yeah. certain ways as well. And again, it's nothing that there's nothing wrong with that. It's mm -hmm. just an energy. It's just, right. it doesn't make you, um, a mean person. It doesn't make you anything, but I love that it, you can see like so many different aspects come up. And then also with the individual, you know, being very an empowering, you're someone that is supposed to be in your path. You're supposed mm -hmm. to kind of be deaf to outside influences. And so right. you're designed to have that strong personality so that you mm -hmm. can stay on your path that's meant for you as well. And right. and that is where I am now through a lot of deconditioning. Yeah. You know, I've never really been the one that um, cares what other people think or tries to fit in anybody's box but I did want people to like me, you know, mm -hmm. it was like, that's, that's a human thing, you know, but then at the same time, I, I started liking myself and I started pouring into myself and I started giving myself permission to feel and act and be a certain way and loving her and knowing that this person isn't for everybody. And that's completely fine. I'm not going to go out and try to make people mad, but at the same time, I don't need everybody to like me. So sitting in my own power has allowed that to not be a trigger point anymore. And we're, we're always going to be growing. There's always going to be fun new things and growth points that I get to experience. But that was probably the biggest piece of my life is sitting in my own power, knowing mm -hmm. who I am and loving that person and being able to come back to that if I'm having an off day and feeling down. I'm like, okay, what's going on? Where yeah. am I not giving to myself? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, no, I honestly, guys, like I feel like Amber is a perfect example of an empowered projector. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so if anyone wants to step into that, like, I don't know, I feel like you should reach out to Amber and she is like an incredible guide for that as well. Um, yeah. yeah, so much wisdom to come from that fifth line as well. So I wanted to talk a bit about parenting because you have kids. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we had this discussion before we hopped on. Um, but why do you think human design is such a helpful tool for us as parents to understand? Yeah. Um, so as parents, you know, people have said you have a new baby and, oh, well, they don't come with an instruction manual. And you hear those little adages and you'll figure it out as you go, which you will. But there's this 
amazing thing with your human design blueprint to be able to um, navigate better, to be able to stave off a lot of the tension that you might have with your children, um, to be able to see how they best eat, learn, process, organize, and build those skills for them as children. So they don't have a lot of the conditioning that they would have, you know, you're raising them to be who they are, not who you think they should be, or to be like you that might not fit them. So knowing their human design really allows you to take them where they are and let them flourish from there. They don't have to go through all the deconditioning that we did as adults searching to find that piece of ourselves. Um, and the other part is, you know, I've, I've, my kids know I love all of them and they know I don't treat them the same. It's not like you're my favorite or you're my, and I might someday say you're my favorite today, obviously, because that one is a hot mess, but I, I meet them where they are. And my son, his authority is emotional authority. You know, he doesn't react the same way that the girls do. And so with him, I can talk to him one-on-one -on -one when he explodes with something. And when he comes back to me and says, hey, mom, I was just really frustrated. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. That to me is amazing because I'm modeling that because I'm emotional authority, right? I'm not perfect. And there are days that I really have just had enough and I explode and then I'm like, okay, guys, <laughs> that was a little extra. It didn't need to be all of that. I've come down now so we can talk about it. But so he's modeling that back to me without me saying, okay, now what were you feeling? He's 14 and he's pretty much figured that out. That's amazing. So yeah, there's, there's the raising them the way that they are rather than how I want them to be peace, which is awesome. No, that's amazing. Like you're raising such an emotionally intelligent I guess not a child anymore. I think he's 14. Is that what you said? Yeah. He will be yeah. next. Week. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but he's um, also kind of like a 50 year old man. So he's fun. He's a lot old of fun. soul. Uh -huh. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, just having that awareness is incredible and being able to have an example to guide you through that because emotional authority dealing with that is not easy. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Yeah. Um, and then my daughter, you know, she's, um, she's a six, two, six generator or manifesting generator. And so she's almost 10. She's bumping into all kinds of things. She's figuring things out. She's living as the three and she has certain things that I need to address to make her feel like she's succeeding. Right. Yeah because she is succeeding. She just doesn't see it herself. Mm -hmm. So being able to look at her and speak to the things that resonate for her, super important. She has her open head, open Ajna. She's loves her lists. So if I say, go clean that room, she's going to not even know where to begin. Right. But if I say, stand at your door, look in and make me a list, set a timer for five minutes, Make me a list of everything you're going to do when you walk in that room. Perfect. So she can make that list. She sets herself up for success and then she can walk in and do it because it doesn't take that thought power. Mm -hmm. She already did the thought power. She just doesn't realize it, you know? So there are different ways to work with the kids. So that's, that's fun. It's, it makes life easier. Oh yeah. Does she have an open root center, undefined root? Um, I'm trying, I sometimes mix up the kids. I think she does actually, because she really, really struggles with time. Yeah. My daughter is the exact same way. She's only five though. Um, yeah. but well, almost five, but she has an undefined root. I have a defined. And so it gets, yeah, it's really hard to get her to do things, mm -hmm. get her to leave the park, get her to go to sleep, get her to do X, Y, and Z. But if I put a timer on my phone and I show her when five minutes is up, mm -hmm. we have to go, or you need to go to sleep. Yeah. Right. Is. When the five minutes is up, she's fine. She's content. Right. Yeah. It's almost like 
they need that warning first Mm -hmm. and that space to process before they can go and do it and not just like, okay, go to sleep right now without warning. Right. But then on the other side of that, you know, if we're rushing around and stressed out and I'm like, we only have five minutes to get there. (laughs) That's a very different thing. Like, yes, I know we have five minutes, but now five minutes feels like two seconds. And now I just can't do anything. That's where she goes. Like Mm -hmm. now I'm just paralyzed. That's not helping mom. I'm like, okay, I'm just letting you know, we've got five minutes, we have to leave sort of thing. But yeah, the the time is a fun, fun thing to play with, with her. And I can see when I trigger something in her and being able to see that and then think of better ways to handle it in the future. That's important too. So yeah, yeah. that kind of goes to my next question that I had. So as an emotional projector parent, how do you manage your own emotional wave in those like highly charged situations and conflicts. Like I have an undefined solar plexus, but I still feel, you know, Mm -hmm. riled up at times, but I can only imagine my, my husband also has an emotional authority and yeah, like he gets triggered as well. (laughs) So how do you manage that? Like what are there certain things that you do techniques? I know obviously we're human. I think that's the one thing about human design that I love that it helps us appreciate the beauty of being human um, and being ourselves. So um, any tips around that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, learning that I am not crazy. I mean, that that emotional wave is integral in my life. Um, previously it was, I felt so emotional, right? I felt like it was wrong. I shouldn't have these high highs and these low lows. Are you bipolar, Amber? No, you're just, you're processing, right? So that was the first step of I'm processing. And that was a deconditioning that I started prior to human design of all of my emotions are valid. Mm -hmm. Um, Feeling them is my emotional guidance system. That was a phrase that I used all the time. Your emotions are this beautiful guidance system. It tells us where we are versus where we want to be. And so that started the deconditioning. But now knowing I'm emotional authority, looking at it very differently. So like if I'm super angry, (laughs) pissed off, irritated, frustrated, whatever, I know that I'm not acting on that, you know? That doesn't mean I'm not going to pop off and need to come back and apologize because I will, but knowing that this is not my time to make a decision. This is not my time to ground somebody or throw out new rules or do any of that in the same respect, whenever I'm feeling just real meh, like I'm not feeling good today. And you ask me if can we go somewhere on Saturday? You're going to have to ask me tomorrow because I'm not making that decision right now sort of thing. Knowing that I have that neutral place to act on it, it might be something that the kids have done that in that moment, I feel like this has to be addressed right now. I let that ride. And then I get to the neutral place. I'm like, hey, three days later, can we talk about this? from the other day, because this is what was going on. And it really triggered something into me. I was upset. You know, like we have those conversations and we have that open dialogue. And I think that with your (laughs) emotional authority is super important is being able to step back and know that the now isn't a thing for us. You know, there, there's no, there's no now for us. It's, we have to see and write it out a little bit. Not that you have to do that with every decision, right? But for the most part, if it's something super important, there's going to be a trigger or something that you need to write a little bit. So taking time, I guess, to answer your question, take time to settle in it before acting on it has been Mm life-changing. So I think, yeah, I love that, you know, emotional authority, it's all about waiting for clarity. And so just that waiting, that additional patience is so, so key in so many different aspects and so many different ways that you can apply it, like with your children as well. Um, but I know you said you, or you mentioned that you work with some parents as well. Like a lot of parents might come to you and ask for advice on, you know, what should I look at in human design or how does human design help me as a parent? Are there any specific areas in someone's chart that you would, let's say, I'm a parent, I come to you and I want to ask about my daughter. What would you 
point out to me first? Like what are some of the most important areas to, to pay attention to? Yeah. Well, the first thing is I think it's important to distinguish. I'm not saying I'm an expert in parenting, right? Because we all screw up. That is not my goal when I work with parents. It's not like you need to parent this way or you're a shitty parent, right? Um, It is the first thing that I like to do with them is figure out their human design and what works with them, as well as figuring out the kid's human design, what works with them, and then comparing them and showing them differences between, you know, you're a projector and they're a manifesting generator. And these are how those things show up differently. Like Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about this before, but like my kids used to announce everything to me. They still do. They still do. I'm going to go get a drink of water. Okay. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do this just because we're sitting in the same room together. Like, okay, have fun. Like I don't announce myself every time I move it used to irritate me. Like it was a source of irritation and it triggered me. And I don't know why I got so upset about it. You know, I just did. Then learning their human design and learning, Hey, they're responding and informing to me. That's exactly how they're made. So then being able to settle back in that and say, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to. They're doing what fits them. And that has nothing to do with me. It doesn't really, they're just kind of announcing it to the room. They're not necessarily yeah. announcing it to me. So that piece, it completely removed all of the resistance that I had. So one of the main things with parents and kids is a lot of them don't come saying communication, right? We need to work on our communication. It's we cannot get along. I don't understand why we're so angry at each other all the time. It's a hostile environment, you know, things like that, that can be fixed really simply when you understand each other. And even if the kid is not old enough or willing, you know, to work with their human design as a parent, taking that piece, you can work with it and make it lots better just by understanding yourself and them. Just like with the time, you know, how we were talking about earlier, just knowing that, Hey, we've got five minutes. I'm just giving you a warning. Oh, that really works for them. Instead of busting through the door, we got to (laughs) go. So. Exactly. And -hmm. I feel like a lot of the conflicts we have in our relationship, I mean, they all in some way, shape or form come down to communication issues. And we don't realize that that's (laughs) the problem, right? Um, Everybody throws that out there. Yeah, You just need to communicate better. Okay. But how, you know, like we can sit (laughs) and talk until we're blue in the face, but we're speaking different languages essentially. So the the marriage thing that everyone says is communication is key and things like that like for a marriage you should be giving them human design readings and letting them start off their marriage knowing each other fully you know if they haven't already done that in their relationship so yes communication is key when you're doing it that the other person's going to hear yeah mm-hmm. exactly oh i love it mm-hmm. um I would just say that like, you know, you have so much experience with, you know, not just learning how to raise kids or having all the tools to raise kids with human design, but also just like the experience of having different types of kids in your house, Mm -hmm. navigating that. Like I honestly struggle sometimes with just one and Mm -hmm. love her to death. But yeah, again, parenting is not easy. We didn't (laughs) get, get any kind of user manual, but you're right. Human design significantly helps you understand your children, um, be more compassionate to ways that they're different from you, be more patient in the ways that they're different from you as well. Mm -hmm. And I think just in relationships in general, right. Right. So it's so, so powerful. It might be that line one, but that's always been such an intriguing thing to me is how people work. I mean, I have, I have gates and different things that speak to that as well, but that piece of, I don't want to ever feel powerless because I'm not powerless. So if something is not working, figuring out more information and changing it is super important. So 
like with the kids, if something's not working, okay, how do we fix this? Mm -hmm. Some phrases that I use with them all the time is whether you do or you don't, or you're right or you're wrong, you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. It doesn't matter what you pick, but you're right. And that's where you're going to go with it. So they're Mm -hmm. all involved in sports and competition cheer and all these things that they feel like are these high achieving things that they fall short in. Okay. We'll prepave it before you go in. What are our goals? What are we doing? What are we accomplishing this 30 minute gymnastics session? What are we leaving with tonight? Yeah. Being able to set those mindsets up with kids, but yeah, you're right. Three of them, very different as a projector is exhausting, (laughs) especially when they're active and everything. I feel like an Uber driver all the time, but at the same time I can rephrase that and look at it as all of the skills that they're gaining, all of the drive and ambition that's being channeled into correct things for them. And Mm -hmm. so I can usually come off of my exhaustion a little bit just by changing my mindset around it. Exhausting, but rewarding. I think that's so rewarding. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Well, well done mama. Mm -hmm. You're doing an incredible job. Um, and yeah, I guess for anyone that maybe wants to learn how to use human design or wants to, you know, get insights on their own kids or even relationships or themselves, um, Mm -hmm. is there anything that you're offering right now that you'd like to share with us that, um, might be able to help with that? (laughs) Yeah. Um, you know, I don't have a specific offer, but I do, um, I have my website that has the store on there for not just human design, but all of the other services that I have. I have an email list and Mm -hmm. I occasionally create things. Um, Actually, I think there is, we we can promote this right now. There is a coupon code out right now that I have out from Brandy's podcast. So it's, it's actually, pretty much all of my other services besides human di- human design, just cause I was leaving that open for her. Um, but it's Brandy with a capital B, B-R-A-N-D-I 20. And it gives you 20% off any of my other services in my store. So we can use that between now and I think I did March 31st. Okay. That's, awesome. That's quite so. a bit of time. So yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll leave yeah, that. But if you sign up for the email list, then I send those out periodically and there's always a coupon code of some sort. So. Well, awesome. So yeah, I'll share all of that information. Um, and yeah, is there any other way that people can connect with you? Um, website Facebook, or website. Facebook? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty much it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I will leave all of that information <laughs> you don't have to spell it out. Don't worry. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess just to close off, um, is there anything you want to share? What was your, actually, I do have a question. What's your favorite quote or mantra? Yeah, that you'd I love like to that. share with us? I love that how you were, um, I really started thinking about that. I have a lot of them, to be honest. Um, I find inspiration from everywhere, whether it's Bible or the Tao or, you know, random Facebook quotes or whatever, but there are some that have really stuck with me and Probably the one that I use the most is Carl Jung. Um, So until you make the unconscious conscious, it'll rule your life and you'll call it fate because that's very true. You know, we live in this autopilot until we have an awareness. And then once we have that awareness, you don't ever go back. You just Mm -hmm. continue to grow from that. So that's one that I use a lot. Um, And I'm actually going to read this one. It's Benjamin Hoff. And he wrote a book It's called... uh, the Tao of who or something like that. It's basically explaining Taoism with poo characters. So it makes it a little bit more. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's when you know and respect your own inner nature, you know where you belong. You also know where you don't. So that to me is perfect because when you learn your human design, you are giving yourself that permission to say, this is me and that isn't. So I no longer have to fit there because I'm here. And so that one speaks to me a lot, but those are my two favorites. (laughs) Those are beautiful. I especially resonate with that last one, you know, Mm -hmm. being a very open projector um, and struggling a lot with trying to fit in and trying to, you know, in the past and feeling worthy, feeling valued, right? It's like Mm -hmm. when we know who we are, we don't have to try to be what we think we lack, right? Or where we think that we're not. So those are so beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Amber. And thank you 
so, so much for being with us today and sharing your, your wisdom, your stories, your um, human design knowledge and parenting and all of that fun stuff. Um, I am really happy to have you here with us. And yeah, I hope you have an amazing, amazing weekend, Amber. And thank you. Thank you so much.